Welcome to the Secrets of Confident Women podcast, where you'll learn all the best tips, tricks, and practical techniques for building the confidence levels you've always wanted. With inspiring interviews, real-life examples, and game-changing insights, this podcast is for women who know that mastering the skill of confidence is one of the most important things they'll ever do. Hello and welcome to the Secrets of Confident Women podcast. I'm Anastasia Adams, one half of Rise Women, and together with my awesome business partner, Jody, we are dedicated to helping all women increase their confidence. And I am thrilled to be hosting this episode of the podcast because we have a really special guest with us today. So I met this amazing woman through a mutual friend of ours a few years ago and have been regularly impressed and in awe of her confidence, her achievements and her style. And by style, I don't just mean the way she dresses, which is great, by the way, but I mean the way she carries herself, the way she talks and the confidence and the grace that she just constantly exudes. Um, And she's lots of fun too. We were actually front row together at the Bruno Mars concert a few years ago with our mutual friend and we just had the best time. So today's guest is the amazing Faye Calderon. Faye is a partner in the Employment and Workplace Relations team at Hall and Wilcox Sydney, which is a leading independent Australian law firm and has paved a path as a lawyer who is so passionate about inclusion, uh, workplace equality and flexible workplace arrangements, which is such a big deal at the moment, especially in light of the current COVID-19 crisis. Faye draws on almost 20 years of experience acting for employers, which is pretty awesome. She presents at major industry conferences, she's published articles, And she's often provided media commentary on a wide range of workplace issues like the elimination of workplace discrimination, bullying and sexual harassment, and also encouraging employers to move beyond compliance and towards the creation of healthy, inclusive, respectful and flexible workplaces. I mean, this woman really is fantastic. And the work she's tirelessly doing today and every day is actually paving the way for a much brighter future for our daughters and just for women in general, because... I mean, with happier, more inclusive and more flexible workplaces, everybody wins. Uh, She's received a high commendation in the New South Wales Women Lawyers Achievement Awards as Private Practice Lawyer of the Year in 2019. She was a finalist for the Lawyers Weekly Partner of the Year in Workplace Relations for 2017 and 2019. And I am just constantly seeing her pop up on my feed online, just doing amazing things to further promote women, both in the corporate sphere and just for life in general. So I was so excited when Faye agreed to be a guest on our podcast and without any further ado, I would like to introduce you all to the one and only Faye Calderon. Hello. Wow, what an intro. Thank you so much. (laughs) So good to be here. Very well deserved. Very well deserved. We're so excited to have you here. Um, So just to kickstart this, uh, let's start with you telling us a bit about yourself, your family, because you've got that too, um, and your work. Yeah, look, well, it's been, like you said, almost 20 years in private practice law firms and it's changed a great deal, you know, since, since I started. But, um, you know, ha- along the way, I've had uh, two boys. One is uh, 14 at the moment, so teenager, grunting oh, good times. about the place. <laughs> Fun time. Yeah. Um, and the other is the other is nine. Um, Preteen. And so, yeah. yeah. And And, of Big, big difference between the two of them, but also an incredible difference, I suppose, in um, practice and life and stage um, between having them being, you know, five years in the one I was sort of a a lawyer that was sort of pushing the boundaries of senior associate. By the time I had the second, I was um, a partner um, and we had, you know, dial-up internet connection at <laughs> least and there was some possibility uh, of remote work um yeah you know and I can imagine a different mobile dynamic. phones <laughs> yeah um, yeah, yeah it, was, it was quite progressive really for, yeah. for 2011 um but yeah so really different life you know phases and stages along the way including you know working from um you know for, for really big firms to working for you know boutique firms um suburban based out in Parramatta when I when I had um Christian which was you know super convenient at the time because obviously flex work wasn't a thing yeah um 14 years ago or wasn't as accessible um it was still frowned and, upon and at that yeah, stage wasn't it yeah there was this yeah misconception. and it was just it was just hard to like it was it was really hard so so actually I'm, I'm wrong it was uh with Christian that I had the dial-up obviously that yeah. was, I, did try. <laughs> I was 50 k's out of town 
Um, so long commutes and yeah. So we went to Parramatta for for about nine years and then and then wow. headed headed back to town. So, um, but really quite. Um, yeah, look, I, I feel, and I know I'm cautious to use the word lucky uh, because I know sort of we make our we make make our That's choices, true. but yep. I think you know there's been some some good luck around along the way, but also you know some some, some difficult choices and some you know choices and hard that work, I'm right? Really pleased I've made and so much work. Yeah, it takes <laughs> hard, action. We say that the harder we work, the luckier we get. It's quite incredible that that happens. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> No, it's um it yes, yeah, something like that. And that kind of journey and that type of path definitely takes a lot of um being in action on your part because stuff like that doesn't just happen. We all know that. Um if you want to carve a path for yourself, it takes something. It takes a commitment, it takes a determination, and clearly you've had that from the beginning. Um and it, this must be a passion of yours. You can't work this hard about these sorts of issues if you're not passionate about it, right? No, yeah. Look, it's really strange. I I always wanted to, you know, do law. Like I'm talking in year seven, I was, you know, going through UAC guides at a time when, you know, kids were not doing that. It was a bit weird, really. Um, But then I sort of, as I progressed and approached uni, uni, I knew I wanted to do something that had a human element to it. I, I, I knew I didn't have the stomach and I did like really early work experience at sort of like Blacktown family law firms and things like that. That would have been interesting. Criminal law firms. So yeah. yeah, it was sort of like my parents had a shop around there and so, you know, got a, got a few, few um, you know, weeks here and there in, in following around lawyers and so I knew Didn't before scare you I off? went to uni that that, yeah, we did. Yeah. I was like, no, no, there's no way I have the stomach or appetite or just ability to, to um, you know, emotionally cope with um, sort of criminal or family law, but I also knew that, um, you know, sort of very early days at uni that I just didn't, I wasn't going to be a, a transactional lawyer or corporate commercial lawyer or tax lawyer. I mean, it, credit you wanted to, make to an them impact. all. I work with them a great deal. Like, yep. you know, they're, you know, sort of they're my friend in the business and in our firms that, you know, I, I do a lot of work with, but I always needed that sort of human element. Yep. And so this, um, you know, so the combined you know, human resources and IR slash law degree then, um, you know, sort of landed me in the right spot in terms of being an employment lawyer. Mm. Um, but then even that sort of taken a path which has been It seems um, to have evolved. Yeah, yeah, even in the time that I've known you, I've seen that evolve because when I yeah. first met you, it was very much about employment law and now it's shifted into a different sphere which – I wonder whether it's like a chicken and egg sort of situation, whether you were going there anyway, but the current climate at the moment, um, I think it's kind of propelled you and it's given you that forum to go, yeah, this is where I want to be. I want to talk about flexible working arrangements because we need them now more than ever. Um, exactly. So the timing yeah. seems to be really great for you and I think it's like everything led you to this point and all that hard work and you're like, right, I'm here now, bring it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> That's so great. It's so good to hear. Um, yeah, I just, I'm so impressed. Every time I see you speaking on a panel or something, I'm like, yes, we need more women like this in the workforce, especially in the corporate sphere. You know, women who take the lead on these sorts of issues. I mean, it is a global issue, I think. And I think it's something that both men and women need to be talking about because if it's a one sided conversation, a lot of these workplace Absolutely. equality things are not going to be brought to the front. Oh, absolutely. But it's also, it's not also completely um, selfless in terms of the way that I position um, the the work that we do and the way, the conversations that I'm now, you know, sort of having with boards and with um, executive teams. It's it's not, you know, sort of a separate and distinct area of, um, you know, my personal interest that, you know, I'm forcing into, you know, my practice. The reality is it's evolved because I was constantly dealing with bullying and sexual harassment and discrimination yeah. complaints and dysfunction, toxicity in the workplace. Um, and it was very clear that there was, you know, these patterns emerging and that, um, you know, there was a root cause to these. So, that, you know, sort of a decade ago, you know, when I was talking about sort of workplace solutions practices and let's, you know, get to the core of the problem and then, you know, sort of eventually evolved that, you know, yes, you know, diverse and inclusive and healthy workplaces actually help yeah. people to thrive and thriving yeah, workplaces are actually 
good for not just employees but also for business. For so everyone, yeah. And if yeah, not me, then who, right? Society. Yep, yeah, exactly. we can't wait for someone exactly. else to, to fix the problem. Exactly. Um, and because this podcast is about primarily confidence, obviously the, the confidence element in this would be that women need to be given an environment and not just women but all people need to be in a workplace environment where they can feel confident about their ability to do their job effectively and not, you know, have their efforts squashed by things like bullying and harassment and, you know, inequality and not being given the ability to have a flexible workplace arrangement if that's what works best for you. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. We at Right With Women are very happy that you're doing what you're doing because it will boost people's confidence. Um, but to turn this back on you, we want to know <laughs> what does confidence or being a confident woman mean to you? Yeah, look, that, it's a really good question because I um, I actually don't um, consider myself – I consider myself to be an extrovert and someone that that really, you know, thrives with people um, Mm -hmm. and, you know, success, but I don't consider myself to be inherently or intrinsically um, confident. I actually think it's quite the contrary. I actually (laughs) think that um, most of my life, and I've I've talked about this with my team and we'll get to them in in like sort of the next stage, but um. I actually think that most of my life I've come from a position of fear um, yeah. and that as we all if do. I don't do this, like, I, I mean, even as a kid, like I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail this exam and I would study really, really hard and then you'd get the H- HD or whatever it was or yeah. you know, the high marks and you're like, but I was really sure I'd failed and I think that's kind of what my mindset was. I don't think it's a particularly healthy mindset um i don't think it's i don't think it's a particularly helpful mindset to be sort of your guiding light yeah um but i do think um that a little bit of it does you know sort of give give you a bit of a kick up and a bit of a drive yeah (laughs) i've seen um i've seen you know sort of um some fearless um people in my time that um you know, just ha- don't seem to, to, to get as far or reach their potential. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that, you know, it is having something that, um, you know, sort of not, not being cocky about it. Like I mm. even hear actors and, and, I, and I, I really successful actors have, I've heard say I'm always sort of worried about where my next job's going to come from. Yeah. And I've always it listened to that and gone, I'm exactly the same as that. Like I always I always worry about, not worry, but I'm I'm never confident that my um, practice or size or files or success will continue. I always feel like I've got to work at it. And when you have those couple of days where, you know, there is a bit of downtime, the first one, then you enjoy the second one, you start scratching around going, okay, yeah. what's, going what's going on? on? Like, exactly. You know, is it, you know, so, so it's, yeah, look, I, I think it's not, um, I heard someone say once that it's not the absence of fear, it's action despite yes. it. Or oh, it may have been us. It. We say that. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I feel like that's kind of at the, at the core of what yeah. you do, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, and, and it's very much what we deal with. Um, you know, that, that little voice that we have in our heads telling us that we're not enough or we need to do more, it is constant and, and we all have this and the, the fear is there all the time and that negative voice is there all the time. I think the key is um, – what you do with it because it's not going away. We all know that it's going to be there yeah. consistently um, from, you know, the person who's literally sitting in the corner doing nothing, waiting to die, to the most successful person in the world. Fear is there all the time. Um, and part of what we do at Rise Women is teach women how to deal with that consistently. Um, and I think the key is to not let it stop you, right? So you have this voice in your head you're saying that says you need to do more, you need to study harder, you need to keep at it, you know, Like you said, one day is great. It's a day off. Second day, what's going on? Um, Some people tend to retract when they have that that feeling of, oh, my God, everything's gone to hell. I need to back off. Um, Whereas other people use that as a driving force. So a little bit of it isn't too bad because you can use it to motivate yourself, right, and push you forward. Absolutely. Um, Which, yeah, is I, I think is really relatable. I think so many women deal with this, and I'm sure some men do as well, but it doesn't seem as explicit. For them, maybe they're better at faking it till they make it than we are. Yeah, that's um, right. 
but uh, yeah, I think a lot of women in the corporate sphere seem really successful and seem really confident. You know, I went, oh my God, Faye's like the most confident woman I know. And for you to go, oh, I'm not really that confident. It's crazy. But clearly you've yeah. got the fake it till you make it thing nailed because <laughs> from the outside, you know, it just seems to be going on. But it's just such a common theme that we see with women all the time. That You know, the women that we think are so confident on the outside have got mm. these techniques that they use to project that confidence even if they're not feeling it on the inside. Yeah, um, and that, that's the thing too because I'm sort of surrounded by, I mean, our the profession is – um, at entry level and sort of early stages dominated by women and, you know, really yeah. perfectionistic, really, you know, sort of high achieving. And sorry, when I say perfectionistic, I mean it in a sort of not, not, not in such a terrible way, but quite, you know, sort of yeah, yeah. Um, high achievers. want to achieve high yeah. achievers. And, yeah. you know, if they, if they get something, you know, wrong or if they um, don't quite hit the mark, you know, they think, oh, and therefore I'm, therefore I see it in them. That's like, therefore I I'm, I'm no good. Yeah. I'm, you know, we internalise our failure. failures It's like so that much. black and white thinking. Yeah. You know, we're either good or we're not or we're, you know, sort of if we're not perfect, we're not good enough. And Isn't so, that terrible? Um, in some ways, like having had that, like having that mindset and knowing that, that feeling and sort of having had, you know, so many years of dealing with it yeah. in practice and in life before that, um, it really is um so helpful in getting potential from in building healthy and productive teams like yeah. my own yeah. teams because they've I'm able to sort of to sort of catch them in that thinking um, and, and you draw and from people chat through yeah. yeah but the, and then their confidence players too you see them I yeah. mean and I've always been the same like I'm I'm really confident I do my best work when I'm around people that think that that I'm great. Oh, <laughs> well, well, that takes me right to our me. next question. Like, yeah. it's such a problem. Like, yeah. you know, I've got this. No, no. I, I said. <laughs> no, it's really not. <laughs> I came out of a review and I was so pumped. And, um, you know, someone's like, oh, did you get a pay rise or what happened? I'm like, oh, shut up. I live for the applause. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's not, it's not about yeah. that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, no, um, we hear and that. I think yeah. we do. Yeah, well, but, look, um, it's, it, but it is a confidence issue technique. With that, but in a way, isn't there? Well, it's sometimes, yes, I think if you only use that as your driving force, if all you do is live for the acknowledgement, then eventually exactly. that runs out and then there's no substance to it. But there is something yeah. big in, um, you know, that sense of achievement and knowing that other people recognise your achievements too because unfortunately as women we often don't recognise our own achievements and it takes yeah, someone else drawing right. our attention to them. Um, for us to be aware of them and to just kind of, you know, we'll do 10 things and nine things will be fantastic. One thing will be terrible and we'll focus on that one terrible thing and overthink exactly. it and play it in our head and where did I go wrong? And it's terrible that we exactly. do that to ourselves. Um, and I don't think when there's anything right, wrong. we never remember when we're wrong. We never no. forget. But again, it's that lessons learned thing. Yes, like, exactly. You know, well, yeah. you know, one of the, the, the things is that, you know, I, I, I find it really, you know, I find it, and again, everyone around me that I've been sort of working with, with they really struggle with that, you know, mistake or that one, mm. one thing that we didn't quite get right, or the one thing that we you know really need to develop on. But the, we the torment thing is, ourselves. You, you, exactly. But yeah. if you sort of, if you focus, um, if you do do something wrong, in many many ways, it's usually you know the the biggest learning. Like I, you, you tend to never do it again. Like it's. Uh, if there's, there's great lessons yeah. learnt and if yeah, it's that whole concept of a growth mindset and um, you can't grow if you don't, you know, sort of try and fail yeah. and learn. Yeah, that's right. It's um, part of the process. And, and we often say um, if you're not failing, then maybe your goals are too small, right? Exactly. Maybe you're Quite not aiming safe. high enough if you're not failing because it is part of the process. You can't be constantly succeeding. It doesn't make sense in any element of no. your life. There need to be failures because that's the only way you learn, really. Yep. You don't learn from exactly. success. You get you do something and you win and you go, oh, that was great, and then you move on. And there's often not exactly. that much of a lesson that we take from that um, because if you win, then you go, well, I got it right. I don't need to develop on that. Um, exactly. And I think what you said before about you know having a team around you that is encouraging, mm -hmm. it's really important because we talk about this all the time and this is actually one of my go-to confidence techniques which is to surround yourself with the right people. 
So if you've got people yeah. around you encouraging you and you're going, you know, that was awesome and keep it up and great work, it will have a very different impact on the way you operate to, Absolutely. you know, you do something great and then you come out and your team goes, oh, you know what? You could have done better there. Like that is just <laughs> soul crushing, right? What, 99%? Where's the other 1%? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and we aim higher next time. Oh, but it's that, terrible. But that's the thing. Like I, I mean, I suppose I get to look behind the curtain of so many workplaces and even sort of early days when I did the investigations, I was literally on the ground yeah. in workplaces. Did you, you see that a lot? So, oh, so many people diminished wow. by, you know, sort of poor leaders that are, yeah. you know, sort of just – um, constant criticism and, you know, constant, just that constant grind, nothing is ever good enough. And you just see people, their wings are clipped, um, you know, things yeah. like they would say to me, oh, um, uh, no, I just can't do anything right. And the more I got wrong, the more I got wrong because I got yeah. scared. And it's it, a spiral. Just, I, it was, and that's where some of these, you know, sort of this, this mantra and this sort of path that I've taken sort of had it evolved from it was from being – on the ground and, and, and listening and, and feeling with these people what, you know, sort of they were saying. And, like, I'm not yeah. saying they were all, um, you know, they were all um, substantiated claims. There was a lot of unsubstantiated claims. I could also pick yeah. one, you know, that, that was that was not quite, um, yeah. you know. That, you that, learned that to see through, like read between yeah, the lines. Yeah, uh, you yep. did. Um, but the ones that really were, you could just see how – diminished they yeah. were from it and and the impact on that team on that organization it doesn't set them up the, for success that does it person especially so um i think when you see that and you can you you can feel the impact of it you mm. know that that's not what the um damage that can be done and you will know that that you really don't want that for yeah. your own and I, I don't think it's sort of an accident that, um, yeah, I've, I've just, con I kept saying again, oh, I'm so lucky. I've always had such great teams, such great people that, so, you know, they just, we're constantly, constantly surrounded by these, you know, excellent, you know, yeah. lawyers and, you know, broader team members where, you know, where we've all flourished together. But I think that is it's, you know, yeah. Of course, well, some of it, like you said before, but, you know. it's it's not luck. We tend to draw the right people to us. So don't you see, yeah. you know, you, you're in a workplace and it's difficult at the moment because a lot of people are working from home. Um, but you do yeah. see in the work, the same sort of people tend to gravitate towards each other. The whingers will yeah. stick with the whingers. You know, the, the cheer squads will lead with the stick with the cheer squads. You see the same positive people going out for lunch together, and you see the yeah. same whingers hanging around, literally around the water cooler, complaining. Oh, did you hear what he said? Did you see what she did? And it's like <laughs> you cannot set yourself up for su success if you're in that environment. So you kind of need yeah. to make a conscious effort to pull yourself out of it and keep the right people around you, which is really hard to do exactly. if. The, the workplace environment as a whole is toxic, which thankfully you step in and kind of you know, help to fix that. Um, but there, there's got to be a catalyst. There's got to be something that kickstart and, and makes people aware that they're being this way um, because otherwise everyone pays for it. And look, Jody coaches so many women who have dealt with this exact issue. They have had their confidence destroyed, you know, within a workplace or by a boss. And these women are competent and they're capable mm -hmm. and they struggle because and someone has shut them down. They're not meeting their potential. Yeah. Like it's such a waste. Yeah. It's such a waste for everyone. So yeah. It's such important work. I've got to say, you know, I, I just think that the work that you're doing, uh, it's so it's so at the core. Um, I think, oh, you know, if, you. That is, if that is not foundational, you know, if that's not right, I think everything mm -hmm. kind of crumbles um, around it. It's all, the rest is superficial, I suppose, is the, the imagery that I've got. Yeah. But, um, Thank you. I, but I do think that it's 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 also important because I mean I I don't know if you probably uh, um, happens to you too I imagine but you know I could be so confident and on such a path and think I'm doing all such great things but it yeah. only takes like I'll be in a presentation and, and it takes one slip or up I write and you're a gone yeah <laughs> yeah does that yeah. happen yes yeah. so oh it happens write to everybody something, they'll write something on a blog post that I've written or they'll yeah. say some, a question and it's usually not a proper question it's like one of those I'll take that as a comment Tony Jones style thing yeah yeah I've gotten up <laughs> and done like a 10 minute rant yeah um you know during you know 10 minutes of question time you're like okay thanks yeah um, but, but I always walk away from those things going oh my gosh 
I'm wrong. I've done something wrong. Right. I've said something wrong. And my first instinct is always, I've messed up. Like that is, you know, whether because it's of one thing that one person said, I've messed up. So yeah. that's my default. Now that's, that's bad as well. It's not particularly healthy. The only upside to it is that I usually find out that I haven't messed up or haven't messed up as badly as I initially yeah, yeah. perceived, and you yeah. can feel quite relieved. Well, I guess retrospect it, is good. It's it's good to kind of reflect back and go, what did I do great, and what do I need? you know, improvement and development on, it's not great when other people try to break you down. Yeah. Um, but it's also not, I mean, I'd, I sometimes I always, I think that, that I'd still rather be that person than the one that blames, shifts blame. Yeah, absolutely. Because like as a leader absolutely. and a team player, my, my um, it, again, it's intrinsic. It's always buck stops. I've messed up. What have I done? How do I yeah. fix it? Don't pass it on um, to other people. Rather than that cockiness that, again, you get in some of those, you know, from managers or, you know, yeah. these functional people in the workplace that are like, I'm never wrong. I'm always right. What have you done? It's everybody else's fault. Yeah. And oh, I think we all that know so many it's people easier like that. <laughs> to recover from, you know, okay, again, it's probably a bit soul destroying. Or it's, yeah. not great for, for, it's not great for your health to be in that constant fight or flight reaction. And but it's better, better than blaming other people. Enough. Exactly, but you don't burn anyone along the way, and you know. So I think that not being, you know, confident or not having that, you know, sort of as your as your um, default isn't always, you know, catastrophic. Yeah, it's, it's actually it can actually be better in terms of as a quality as a leader. Uh, yeah, as a, as a developmental tool, I guess. So in light exactly. of that, then tell me, when are you the most confident version of yourself? Aside from when you're with your team and they're telling you, oh, my God, you're awesome, when are you the most confident <laughs> version of yourself? When I'm winning. It's, a, it's that flow issue, you know, when, you do, when you've done, you know, had a good case, had a good win, um, had a good performance review, had a good, um, you know, presentation especially. I love that, you know, sort of elated feeling that you get when you're yeah, coming that buzz. on, you know, a stage and you feel like, oh, you know, I, I did that right or, I, you know, people were happy with that. Um, yeah. You know, it's that – that's when I'm um, most confident. But I, I've got to say that my, more and more lately um, I've found that I've really got kicks. So, so I think that you get to a stage where – you kind of go, yep, I've done that. I love that. I've been there. And now I'm kind of really happy when it's happening to people around me. And yeah. so getting other people to feel that, so getting my team to feel that is kind of, you know. or It's just as powerful? Sort of, it's just as powerful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's not limiting because there's so many of them, you know, they so, they keep coming through. So, yeah, yeah. And it's um, that, that saying, I've heard that, you know, that one about the candle. And a flame, like no. if a candle, if the flame from one candle lights another candle, the first candle's flame doesn't go out. And it's about oh, exactly. continuing that, you I know, love that. you don't yeah. lose the first flame from the second flame that you've lit. One candle can light a thousand candles and it doesn't lose that initial flame. So if oh, we keep that. developing each other, everybody wins. Um, and I find it interesting. Imagery. Yeah, yeah, I know we're going to have to add this to your podcast imagery. A picture <laughs> of a flame with lots of flames. Um, yeah. I find it interesting that you said that you you feel most confident when you're winning because all the things that you mentioned from the wins are things where you get into action, right? It's not just, yeah. oh, I, I put on a favourite top or something. It's always about getting into action and and I've done something, I've achieved something and that's where that confidence comes from. And we often talk about um, – you know, you're either a player on the court, uh, uh, yeah, a player in on the court of life, or you're just a spectator. And it's yeah. really hard to boost that confidence if you're just watching other people do it and you're not doing anything yourself. Exactly. Um, so yeah, exactly. It, it's funny how that all, all those confidence boosters that you say come from playing the game, and that's so great. Um, but one thing and I'm no, interested. Yeah, go on. Go. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you go. I was just going to say it was interesting before you mentioned that a lot of um, entry level positions in what you're doing are, are primarily females. But I can imagine that at your end now, you know, at the leadership end and the partner end, it would be a predominantly male industry. Yes, is it still a boys' club? Because I was in the legal industry many years ago, and it was a boys' club. Is it still that way in in the top end? It's getting better, and some and some firms and some practice areas are better than others I yeah. suppose employment law is not as male dominated it is you know sort of as perhaps um, banking and finance transactional yeah. 
areas tend to be. So in that respect, um, it's not, you know, sort of, but it's not as as um, male dominated. There's a bit more balance. Mm. Um, but yeah, look, it's not uncommon to be the only woman in the room. In the room. Or, Do you find um, that this a- does impact your confidence in any way? And if so, in that situation, what do you do to kind of, you know, I I remember times in my career where I would be in a room full of men and there is this this great study that we've we've looked at before where they say that in a room full of women, a man will speak just as much as he normally would, whereas in a room full of men, a woman speaks, I think, a third of the time that she normally would. We we tend to, you know, pull back. Um, And have you ever found at any point, or yeah, like 75% less, Um, Have you ever felt at any point in your career where your confidence did take a hit because of this specific issue? Look, I think earlier, um, you know, the bravado is is really difficult to keep up with when you're more, you know, sort of junior. Um, And I don't think it was just the female thing. So I was sort of against the odds, you know, with especially when I sort of was just coming out of law and coming into Big End of Town. There was, you know... Female, Western Sydney, culturally diverse. You were a whole uh, bunch of minorities. Background. <laughs> so yeah, so it was. It was yeah. you know there were a whole lot of factors at play. Not, you know, it's not the worst kind of mix, but in terms of you know sort of minority groups, but you know they're they're a lot worse off than, than I am. But um, yeah, well, you're not on the starting sort of line with everyone else, though, are you? You are one yeah, foot back, was, and you feel like you need to yeah. work harder to keep up. That's right. So I did. I did find that at the start, but um. I found that I would try and sort of talk the talk and sort of keep up with with them and and try not to be I was not being authentic or not so the, because I couldn't be authentic I suppose I was saying yeah. less because I was worried that what I was going to say wouldn't you wouldn't know wouldn't it. be right or wouldn't cut it you know yeah. wouldn't be you know, sort of sufficient but as I've sort of progressed and I found that like you said, like attracts like. Um, the rooms where, you know, sort of the rooms that I work in, the rooms with my clients, the people that I choose to join firms with yeah. tend to be, you know, sort of people that I that I like and I like them because I can be authentic and I have been authentic right from the get-go, from the first, you know, sort of handshake or elbow, yeah. whatever it is, nudge as it is <laughs> Elbow now. tap, yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> it makes a big Kiss difference, the though. Kiss cheeks, as I do sometimes. Um, you know, it, yeah. it, I've, I've been authentic and so it's been what you see is what you get a bit like I haven't so then so then the more I was myself then you know the the more successful I kind of became because I was attracting people that you know sort of accepted me and there's only I know the fake it you fake it until you make it I think you can can cut it for a little bit but I just then you need to back it up sustainable solution yeah Um, well it's just enough to get you to that point where you're confident in yourself right and that's where that you know that belief in yourself is where confidence comes from so if you do kind of fake it in the beginning but kind of maintain your authenticity as you said and that's a theme that comes up in all of our interviews, every time I speak, oh, we right. speak to any woman and they talk about what makes them feel confident. It always comes back to that. Just being their authentic self, it makes such a difference. Because like you said, you can't sustain fakeness for too you long. You just can't. And it, that's it the whole through. feeling of a fraud, isn't it? If you yeah. are being yourself, then then you feel like you're going to be found out. And, yeah. and you know, that, that, that dreaded it's, that imposter it's not going to be enough. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's not... It's not um it's not constructive, it's not productive and it's not the foundation for a sort of a successful career. No, no, it's not. So let's switch it over to something else for a second. Um we know that low levels of confidence impacts our you know, professional life, but it can also impact our personal lives because it will stop us from doing things that we want to do. So just in general, what kind of techniques would you call on to keep your confidence levels high? Um, within your personal life and as an add-on question to that like I know that you manage a really successful career but obviously you have a family as well you've got two boys who are at an age where you know they're high demand Um, you're married uh, so family obviously is a priority in your life so do you have any specific practical techniques that you can use to sort of switch from that career mode to personal mode and maintain a confidence that you know lets you manage both yeah and it is so important 
to have both I, if for me like you know I wouldn't have it any other way yeah. but it's a juggle and yeah. quite often the greatest struggle is in the juggle and you know sort of the balls are all going to fall from the air at the same time yeah. like you know work's going to blow up at the same time as the kids are sick and yeah. the, you know the peak of soccer season or whatever so it is hard um, and there are times where it's it, where it's you know sort of harder than others but I because you want both and you're driven by having both I suppose yes. the the benefit of that is that um is the gratitude I, I suppose when you know things aren't going great at work you can retreat you know to to your family and when things you know are getting a bit annoying with your family then you can you've get got work as a backup work <laughs> and, uh, you know so so it is the balance is great but I suppose from from more sort of you know foundational pieces that you've got to um I think sometimes just um do the basics right yeah. um sleep eat mm. you know meditate or go for a walk and you know it doesn't have to be in a traditional sense meditation yeah. but just have that that centering so that you can be good for both yeah. um I think you can't switch from one and I think what a lot of people have struggled with at the moment is switching from one to the other or having you know no boundaries the yeah. lines are completely blurred yeah yeah um and that especially is, right now you know, right sort of, yeah, chaos. Yeah. I mean, we've got half our businesses in Melbourne, a half our workforce oh, wow. because we're headquartered from Melbourne. We were, you know, almost a hundred years yeah. there before we went national and doubled. So, um, so it's um, it I is can see it, isn't you know, it? Sort of to, the, to... the strain in the people and, and what yeah. we felt obviously when we were in lockdown. Yeah, um, you need to, you know. When I was when I was younger, again, I used to compartmentalise a lot better. I used mm-hmm. to be able to sort of work the longer days in the office, file it away, and then have my days and at home switch and off. not have any separation. Switch off, and that yeah. was, you know, that's great from a you know sort of um, third space kind of point of view, like yeah. where that Simon Sinek talks about that you've got sort of that gap. But I don't think that's realistic anymore. So you can't, if you can't get the physical boundary yeah um then you need to you know psychologically achieve that in yep. some other way be it the walk be it the mindfulness um you know and just and just having some some structure but gratitude as well so i think just being able to go well you know what it's it's a real blessing that i've got both and that yeah. i can have both um and sometimes and so the lines do get blurred to, um, but exactly. sometimes I almost feel like that's a great thing. You know, we used to, there was a time when, when people were at work and they worked so hard. And like you said, you work long hours and your family does take a hit, right? Because you're yeah. absent. Um, and then you're at, when you're at home, something's going on at work that's urgent and your work takes a hit because you're like, no, I'm at home now and I'm not dealing with this. Um, and I yeah. found that a lot of people, are, it's a process, but people are starting to find that balance, which is great, that they can be mixed. They don't necessarily, you don't have to blur your priorities, but you can kind of mush your time together um, and, and, you know, find a balance that works for you. I love the fact that I can work from home, you know, I'll have my meeting, I'll get through my emails, I'll put dinner on and then I can get back to yeah. another meeting and then I can, you know, pick up the kids and, and it does blur my day in a sense, but it means that you have that ability to get everything done. And like you, when you're someone who does want it all, um, you find a way to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this has been the best time for, for me. It's a terrible saying that coming out of a pandemic, but, you know, initially I was really nervous about it. And of course our work had exploded yeah. you know, when everyone was doing oh, stand as a job keeper. It was the work, most I've ever worked, like in terms of how much volume there was yeah. of calls coming in directly. Yeah. But um, as it sort of, be, you know, become a bit more balanced. Um, it turns out like this is now the longest consecutive period I have spent with my family. How family. great is that? Right? Um, because I've been at home. Um, yeah. I went back to work when both boys were five months. So I had like yeah. a total of six months off, you know, sort of through both pregnancies and I was full time all along um, and very little flexible work until, mm. you know, from home until very recently. But now so, they've got you back. Yeah, and they've got me back, and yeah. and you know, look, it's looking like a more long term solution for our firm. Like we've just start, surveyed our staff, and 
I'm working um, with the, the board on the um, HW Evolve project, which yeah. is, you know, about transitioning to... We've always had sort of remote, the last couple of years that so we've had um, remote working available and, you know, yeah. people, people, flexible work policies and all of that. But, um, you it's know, becoming it more like accepted. it's going to be much more, a, a greater take up. Like people yeah. were doing one day from home, but now we're talking like, yeah. you know, it looks like most people would prefer to do three days from home and two days in the office. Well, I think Based employers as well. engagement survey. Yeah. yeah. They're realising that. Everybody. Um, I think it was also this sense of micromanagement, you know, um, that, that, fear of that I think a lot of employers were dealing with if I can't see them doing their work then they're not really doing it um, and, and then that you know as an employee it affects your autonomy you go what do you not trust me and it creates that toxicity in an environment um, and I think this this flexible you know people have let people work from home and they didn't die they kept going if anything no, they became more right. productive well, fact, because they lost travel it's time been the saving grace. yeah 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 I know it's great it is great. Because they're like, oh, my business has continued. We've yeah. continued to hit, you know, targets. And Maybe even thrive. We've been able to employ our staff and not lose staff. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And people are happier um, because they do have that balance and it's great. I exactly. think it's great for so many people. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a different kind of question now. So we've been talking about high confidence and how to maintain high confidence. But do you remember a time when you had low confidence around something and, and what was it that you did to kind of build yourself back up again and talk yourself out of that space? Great question, actually. Oh, very interesting because I have low confidence all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I know exactly what I do. I can answer that one. Excellent. Um, we want to know I, your techniques. That's what we want. We want the yeah. secrets of a confident woman. We want to know exactly what it's, you do to build that up. <laughs> it's a bit fridge magnet. but That's I, okay. I, we love uh, it. It's, whenever I find myself um, wondering how far I can go, you know, as you said, yeah. you're saying, I yes. look back and see how far I've come. Nice. Um, and I have it on my desk. Do you? That oh, quote. Okay, yep. there you go. I read it. It was a quote or a fridge magnet or something sometime, and I've and it's stuck. And yep. it's exactly my. It, it's a strategy. So I'm like, yeah. okay. Oh my gosh, this is the biggest case. Oh my gosh, this is the biggest presentation. This is the biggest thing. And then I always go right. Okay, when else have I done something similar to this? Let's go back to that. Sometimes, and I'm a writer. I'm very tact. Like I need to. So I'll write. Pen and paper. I'll start writing. Yeah, like me. Like me. Like, <laughs> there's yeah. a reason we get along. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, other than the whole, like, you know, you guys scored me front row for my 40th oh, birthday of how Bruno Mars. I mean, that helps. What like, a party night that was. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Best. So um, good. Yeah, no, I hear you, though. I, I think it is about celebrating wins um, because we do forget. We often forget and and – you yes. know, it, and, and things are scary, but it is about taking small steps. So like you said, you've got like the biggest presentation coming up that you've ever done, but that doesn't discount the fact that you've done 100 before then. They may not have been as big, um, but you yeah. kind of work your way up to that number. So I think that's a really great technique to kind of look back and, and retrospectively go, oh my God, I did great last time and the time before and the time before. I can do it again. Exactly. It helps to get rid of that fear, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, and it's that one step, in front of the other, one foot in front of the other yep. as well. So you look back, you go, okay, that this seems insurmountable. Let's see where I've come from. Let's see what I've done. Like, you know, what what is similar? Where When have I felt like this before? When have I been challenged yep. with this before? How did I go? Right, it was great. Okay, now what what's the path ahead? And don't look too far ahead. Yeah, It's just one step in front of the other. Like I, you know, sort of sometimes would look at my diary and go, oh my gosh, how did I do this? I've got like six presentations in four states in a month, you know, like that sort of thing. And you just go, you start to get that pit of your stomach panic going, how am I going to pull this off? And yeah. you just have to go, stop. Because it always comes, <laughs> Each right? Each one of these in isolation is completely fine. Exactly. Bite-sized chunks. one day at a time, yep. you know, one foot in front of the other and, you know, just yeah. don't, don't look too far ahead. Yeah, and, and, and it'll always come. It doesn't matter how successful you are, how many presentations. You know, I, I'm no. pretty sure that even those amazing people doing those TED Talks are still freaking out before they go on stage. And, and Jodie talks about this yeah. all the time when she's doing her presentations. It's about getting comfortable with those feelings when they come up and being yeah. familiar with them, right? Because you are doing this massive presentation and that feeling of fear and self-doubt and negative thoughts come up. 
but you know you've dealt with it before because if you're able to look back and go, oh, I felt that last time and this is how I managed it and I'm feeling it again. I didn't die. I will make it work. Um, it's a really, really powerful way to kind of work through anything that seems scarier than it should. Exactly. Um, so Perfect. tell me. You guys are yeah? amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Um, it's this fear of failure, I think, too, that drives us often. We often have this this idea of what if I fail? What are people going to say? You know, I'll look ridiculous. Will it ruin my credibility, you know, my reputation, all that yeah. sort of thing? So tell me, was there ever something that you failed at that now in hindsight you are so glad you didn't achieve? And, and what kind of learning did you get from that? Yeah, look, it's hard. I never accept sort of failure as something that should have happened. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've got to say that I always, I never forget like the life, you know, sort of life lessons that come from it. Like I, it's, it, it's like that whole thing that we were saying, like you just learn so much when yeah. things don't go quite right. Yeah. Um, sort of as a more practical example, the way that, you know, sort of, you know, when things don't go r- right, um, I, I kind of have a, a fatalist or sort of serendipitous mindset that I go, okay, this didn't this didn't work or yeah. this isn't what I had planned, but I'm not going to sweat it and sit here and worry about what happened. I'm kind of going to dust myself off and, and move forward. And I kind of try Amazing. and find a silver lining. Oh, I love um, that. That's my favourite thing to do. <laughs> I'm the silver it? lining yeah. girl. I just love that because there always is. I just... If you I look hard enough, you'll always point. find it. Yeah, I agree. I don't see the point. And, I, and sometimes, sometimes it kind of does, um, you know, it's hard to know at that stage. So you've got to dust yourself off and try again and sort of keep going. Yeah. Um, and it might not be apparent in that moment why it happened or, you yeah. know, that, that, you know that, that you were going to land in a much better place. But certainly in jobs, like... Because you're clouded at that time, right? And, and you're kind of wallowing. Back. Yeah. Exactly. And I've never considered any job change, I must say, a failure. But I, the last one um, that was two and a half years ago, mm-hmm. um, the last firm that I was at, we, we closed. I was on the executive team and, you know, the firm and I was sort of in the last group of people that was trying to, you know, stop the firm from sort of yeah. existing. I that, mean, that's it, people hard went their separate ways manage. in groups and yeah. it, was, it was professionally – um, the most difficult thing I have, you know, ever dealt with. Had to um, manage, yeah. You know, financial tolls, you know, on myself and every and so many people around us. Um, it was, you know, I I really like to think that, you know, I can roll my sleeves up and make things work. But yeah. you know, I was one of many, many in the firm. Mm. But um, but it still takes its and toll. And it was, it did, yeah. it did, and. But now, sort of when we when I started at Hall and Wilcox, I kind of walked in and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, you know that was such a can't believe what happened, and you know that's are you okay? And you know how horrible and how bad." And and I I've sort of said, "Oh look, you know what? I've just considered it as an investment. It was a yeah. tough year, but and I'm um, here now. I invested. I invested. I probably couldn't have pivoted from my Parramatta law firm into a firm like Hall and Wilcox. Yeah. Um. So it was a kind of good you know stepping stone um did i did it hurt yes did yeah. i you know um did you grow you know, there was a lot of pain in a lot of ways um yeah. but it was an investment and i've landed in the place that i'm supposed to be in and yeah. i'm so grateful and do you know what the practice has doubled there you go in two years which is yeah. like not standard at this stage of my career it has yeah but I think everyone brings something most... to that workplace and the experience that you had with the last place is what, you know, will help to bring Hall and Wilcox yeah. to where you want it to be and everyone draws on their own experiences. So it's almost inevitable that if everyone's got that kind of positive outlook and we'll learn from our mistakes and we'll do better next time, you can only yeah. go up from there. Whereas if you start to and wallow you know for a exactly. while, then, you know, all, all is lost and you need to wallow a little bit. You need to have a bit of a sook and go, oh, my God, I can't believe yeah. that happened. Then you just move on. You can't, like you said, you dust yourself on. You get on with the job. But gosh, the appreciation yeah. and the elation you get from at the other side, and that's what I think we've got to remember when we are having, in terms of building resilience, when you just have those really tough periods of your in life. Yeah. When you come out the other end of it, it's like, 
the rainbow, like or the pot of gold down the bottom of the rainbow. Like it's just such a, you know, feeling of, oh, yeah, wow, just like I, euphoria. Can, I can breathe, I can yeah. succeed, I can thrive, I can, you know, and, and that's how I kind of felt. And I think that has been such a, so such an important part of you know sort of the success and the turnaround in in the practice and you know yeah. in, all, in the team like it's the best team I've ever worked in and worked with in, in 20 years it's the biggest team yeah and they're just so full of energy and the more energy we have the more the more you get. create like you know yeah. It, yeah, yeah. yeah it's an exponential Grads growth want to work with us they're like oh employment is such a fun team I'm like yes yeah it is yeah, <laughs> that's great we're winning <laughs> Amazing. And, and that's exactly where you want to be. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 nobody wants to be seen on a bad day. Um, that is all amazing. I absolutely love it. I love your positive outlook. I love your can do attitude. Um, I love that idea of sometimes things are terrible. Sometimes I don't feel confident, but I get on with what I have to do. Um, and I think if everyone adopted that attitude, the world would be a much better place. Um, so now I'm going to hit you up with our Rise Women final power questions. Are you ready? Hands on the oh. buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are designed to just be short, quick answers. We want to know straight off the top of your head, what are you thinking about these? I think there's six questions. Okay. Okay. Let's do scared, it. No, 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 no. Don't be scared. Very <laughs> easy. Um, what do you wish every woman, every woman knew? Um, that they can be better tomorrow. Wonderful. Yeah, I love it. I try to tell myself that every night. I go to bed going, tomorrow will be a better day. <laughs> Love it. Okay, tell me, what's your superpower? Connection. Awesome. Great. Uh, heels or flats? Flats. Not even a little bit of a heel? Used to. <laughs> no, no, I remember. Maybe ask, ask me post-COVID. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure I know. I know. Truth be known, I've never done a presentation in flats. Oh, okay, okay, so, I love that. We so, do that all the time. So yeah. I, I've I've made a taxi driver stop to purchase he, a heel in Melbourne. <laughs> I love it um, because I've forgotten them. Yeah. So the, there is something but, that heels do for confidence, right? Flats so, are great yeah, for comfort. Yeah, you, but, you've caught me. But you know, like I said, six months of COVID, I haven't put a pair of heels in. I know put heels on. I bought some the other day, um, and I'm dying to wear them. I don't know where I'm going to wear them. I'm but they're scared. There. I don't I'm... know if I can walk in them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we've had too many years of experience to forget. It's, I think, I'm hoping it's like riding a bike where you can't forget how to yep, walk in heels, right. but we'll find out soon on. enough. Um, tell me, your favourite quote or rule you live by? Yeah, um, favourite quote is definitely, uh, I think that fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Nice. Nice. And, and and unfortunately, as we were discussing earlier, fear is always there. But if you learn how to manage it right, um, mm-hmm. then nothing seems like a failure to you. Amazing. Exactly. Tell me, who inspires you and why? So many people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, at the moment, I've got, again, it's probably a product of the time, so many women on um, Twitter that I'm following yep. that, it's their day-to-day life. It's their sort of relentless pursuit of whatever they're doing that I'm kind of following and seeing everyone from sort of journos to, um, you know, people like Kirsten Ferguson, who I now think I'm, you know, sort of a really good friend with. Um, yeah. I, You know, people that are passionate about what they're doing and that just give it their all, like, people like Georgie Dent I mean these are you know sort of people that are close to me I, I find it I'm a bit tactile I like to have people I don't know if that's the right word but nearby. I like to nearby yep. yeah so yeah. I, I, I I've never been like someone that's idolized you know um you know someone that I didn't know and didn't yeah. connect with so it is you know Georgie Dent for example like I find her so vulnerable and so yeah easy to connect with and so like that vulnerability that she puts out to the world is so endearing and her passion and pursuit for you know what she's trying to achieve is is just so yeah so so good Um, we we actually discussed that and it's important for role models to be relatable isn't it yeah yeah people like you guys that make a difference you know every day to women like honest honest to goodness like i love 
like women that, and it doesn't just have to be women, people that just go out of their way to make mm-hmm. other people better, happier, healthier. Yeah. It's just, um, there's really so much to be said for that. Yeah, people who I think have a, a happy and positive purpose. You know, your, your intent is to yes. build people up, not bring them down. Um, exactly. And yeah, the world would be a better place if everyone just had, you know, if we all thought about each other more than we thought about ourselves, then we wouldn't have to worry about ourselves because it's taken care of. I wouldn't have to worry exactly. about myself. I know everyone else is worrying about me. Um, and That's I, I exactly feel like right. there is a shift in a dynamic. People are starting. I don't know whether it is the pandemic. I don't know whether it's just we're evolving as a species. I don't know what it is. But I think people are starting to find that kind of compassion for your fellow human. And I'm yeah. sure there are many people who are living in parts of the world where they can't see it yet. But at least within our own community, I can feel that. I can feel it starting. People yeah, are starting to get a bit more grateful for what they have. And maybe it takes a loss. Maybe it takes a lockdown. Maybe it takes a pandemic for people to realise yes. that there are things that we used to take for granted can easily be taken away. Exactly. Um, it's okay. monumental, the difference. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, all right, last one. Finish this sentence. If I had even more confidence than I do now, and I'm going to go with you do have confidence, you just don't know it. If I had even more confidence than I do now, I would. Jeez. I mean, basic level do a TED Talk, but nice. I'd much rather – you know, change the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love that. If I had more confidence yeah. than I do now, I would change the world. <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. Like, you know, just change, just take, take, have a bit more influence. I do find a path that would um, at least my corner of it, you know, yeah. sort of just make women in our profession um, much more successful and, you know, change the, the, the shape and look of that boardroom. A greater impact. Yeah. Yeah, which I think you're well on the way to because – um, it just I know from my perspective, um, I think you are making an amazing impact. I think the world, the corporate sphere, um, you know, small communities, big firms, we need more women like you advocating for us and just for humans in general. So thank you for everything that you do. Um, and thank you for being our guest on our podcast today. I can't wait for everyone to hear this. Um, It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you for answering all my questions authentically and honestly and having a bit of fun. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Um, And a big thank you to everyone for listening today. Please remember to subscribe to this podcast, share our episodes with your friends. We want everyone to hear this podcast um, and this episode in particular. It really makes such a difference to getting our message out to um, all the women in the world that we want to reach and just to getting us closer to achieving our mission, which is making confidence every woman's new normal. Uh, You can head over to risewomen.com, look up all the resources and programs we have there that can help you build your confidence. And until next time, remember, with confidence, anything is possible. Thank you so much, Faye. Thank you so much, Heidi. It was amazing to speak to you. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone.